there was Lamb himself, the most delightful, the most provoking, the most witty and sensible of men. He always made the best pun and the best remark in the course of the evening. His serious conversation, like his serious writing, is his best. No one ever stammered out such fine, piquant, deep, eloquent things in half a dozen half-sentences as he does. His jests scald like tears, and he probes a question with a play upon words. What a keen, laughing, hair-brained vein of home-felt truth! What choice venom! How often did we cut into the haunch of letters while we discussed the haunch of mutton on the table? How we skimmed the cream of criticism! How we got into the heart of controversy! How we picked out the marrow of authors! And in our flowing cups many a good name and true was freshly remembered. Recollect, most sage and critical reader, that in all this I was but a guest. Need I go over the names? They were but the old everlasting set, Milton and Shakespeare, Pope and Dryden, Steele and Addison, Swift and Gay, Fielding, Smollett, Stern, Richardson, Hogarth's Prince, Claude's Landscapes, the cartoons at Hampton Court, and all those things that, having once been, must ever be. The Scotch novels had not then been heard of, so we said nothing about them. In general, we were hard upon the moderns. The author of The Rambler was only tolerated in Boswell's life of him, and it was as much as one could do to edge in a word for Junius. Lamb could not bear Gil Blas. This was a fault. I remember the greatest triumph I ever had was in persuading him, after some years' difficulty, that Fielding was better than Smollett. On one occasion, he was for making out a list of persons famous in history that one would wish to see again, at the head of which was Pontius Pilate, Sir Thomas Brown, and Dr. Faustus. But we blackballed most of his list. But with a gusto would he describe his favorite authors, Dunn, or Sir Philip Sidney, and call their most crabbed passages delicious. He tried them on his palate, as epicures taste olives, and his observations had a smack in them, like a roughness on the tongue. With what discrimination he hinted a defect in what he admired most, as in saying that the display of a sumptuous banquet in Paradise for Gain was not in true keeping, as the simplest fare was all that was necessary to tempt the extremity of hunger, and stating that Adam and Eve in Paradise Lost were too much like married people. <laughs>